Hello and welcome back to Ken O'Connor Racing. Today what we're going to do is we're going to be working with a product from uh, RaceLogic and they call these Sport Port Templates. Um, these are made by uh, John Caldwell. He's got a pretty extensive background with Yamaha and what he does is he takes this magnetic material and computer designs port layouts, cuts them into these templates so pretty much you can do your own porting. I've used these templates on several different models of snowmobiles, ATVs, you know, a bunch of stuff, just trying them out. And uh, he's got a really good product here and we're just gonna, we're gonna shoot a video for him. I'm actually gonna port a cylinder. What we're working on here is a Polaris uh, 800cc twin with power valves. And you can basically go to his, um, go to his website, it's racelogic.com and look up your make and model and you'll be surprised he's got he's got templates that cover just about everything uh, especially snowmobiles this guy's big 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 into snowmobiles um, so what we're going to do is we've got our kit you get a uh, manual with it the manual he will go through this really quick but he just gives you the do's and the don'ts and shows you you know how to how to do the porting what tools you need gives you some safety precautions uh, it's good reading you know, if, if nothing else, and the templates definitely work. So um, we'll get started with uh, showing you what you're going to need to actually perform this stuff first. Here's the tools we're going to use to uh, port the cylinder. We've got a couple of right angle grinders. I got one set up for grinding the left side, one set up for grinding the right. I'll explain that later when we get into it. And I actually like these. A little bit smaller profile. A lot of stuff I work on is. Um, fairly small and bore diameter so I mean the cars in that these work really good a lot of guys work on bikes with these I just I actually prefer these they're not as tough as this type of grinder but they're cheap um, you can replace these things for about sixty five dollars I've got a pretty good assortment of carbides stones sanding wheels buffers and uh, you're gonna need all of this stuff this is all Fordham equipment I'm using a uh, Fordham motor with a foot control that controls the speed to drive all of this stuff but these are some of the grinders that that we use here at Ken O'Connor Racing. Um, you can get away with other stuff. This this is more of a professional setup. I know you can use Dremels. I know Dremels have right uh, right angle attachments for them, but um, we do this stuff for our living here. So you need you need some industrial equipment. This stuff works pretty well. I've had this, some of this stuff for 25, 30 years. Um, and uh, CC Specialty is where we get all of our supplies. Great company, very knowledgeable people. They rebuild equipment. Um, I'll show you the porting station we're going to use next. This is the porting stand that we use. Um, picked this up quite a while ago, but it's kind of neat. You can move your cylinder around anywhere you want. Um, the other thing you're going to need, you know, you probably don't have one of these. You can use a vise. John explains that in his uh, in his booklet. But what you really are going to need is a lot of light. So we've got this. We've got a couple of lights. I can actually put three lights on different angles if I want, and you can. Once you start doing this, you'll see as you move the light, you'll, the lines will get more defined. Sometimes putting the light dire uh, directly on the line is not the best thing to do. And we'll explain that later. Okay, chapter one in the book uh, discusses the cylinder preparation. And basically what that concerns is, is cleaning the cylinder thoroughly. Um, John recommends that you use alcohol. We used carb cleaner here. Um, probably use brake cleaner anything just to get the grease off it has to be a really 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 clean surface or your your um, layout fluid isn't going to stick it's not going to adhere and when you put your template on it's going to peel it right off so um, alcohol rubbing alcohol or brake cleaner or carb cleaner it's probably all going to work fine uh, the next thing that we did is we went ahead and we used Dykem blowing uh, you can get that uh, MSC is a good company um, we get most of our machine shop stuff from them that's where we got that and we just put a a nice coat on there, uh, not too thick, not too thin, just evenly lay it out and then let it dry completely. Um, the next step is to lightly grease the inside of the cylinder. The book calls to do that. We don't do it like that. We grease the back side of the template and it's the same thing. It just seems a little bit easier than sticking your fingers in there. Um, at that point, the template's going to get laid up in here and I'll show you how to do that. Once you have your cylinder prepped, you have your bluing in there and it's dry, you just go ahead, put the template in, line it up this way. We look at the sides of the exhaust port here and the sides of the template and just get everything lined up like that. The next step is to use a straight edge 
and we just put it here, pull your template back at you. That's going to align the top of it. The next step is to go ahead and push the template down and get it to adhere to the grease, making sure that you maintain the same height with the template as you set with your straight edge. Once you have your template laid out where you want it in the cylinder, um, we use a pick like this with the bend in it. Just going to very carefully push the template down and don't go back and forth when you make the lines. Make one nice straight line. Uh, so you just push the template in, get it to adhere to the grease, and then come in and just make a nice sweeping line. Trace out John's port layout. Um, if you ever get a chance to talk to John on the phone, I don't want to make his phone ring off the hook, so I'm not going to give you his phone number, but uh, he's a pretty interesting guy, and he's a firm believer in these templates. He explained to me uh, his exact words, and I'll quote him, um, porting anything without a template, maybe not even his template. Now, we make these templates, too. There's computer programs out there where you, that you can get to figure this out and make your own layout, but he says porting without a template is ludicrous. And uh, I agree with them. Um, we don't use these exclusively, but we do use them. It's a great product. Uh, like I say, we, we have computer programs. We generate our own. Uh, the quality of his templates is much better than mine. I use um, like an oak tag when I make mine and then cut them out by hand. He actually cuts these out on a CNC. So he programs all these radiuses. And even though this looks like a pretty straight angle, um, he's, he can have up to 20 radiuses in an area this big and he's able to do that with these templates. Um, so I have to agree with John that, you know, without some kind of a guideline, you can't just get in there by hand and start cutting a bunch of steel. Um, things aren't going to be even. Uh, things aren't going to be the same. Um, so I have to agree with John that, you know, any kind of porting should be done with some sort of template. It's going to be a little trickier to film than we anticipated, but um, you can see the line in here. Nice straight line, and that's what we're going to be porting to. Uh, it's important when you get in there with the tools, and I don't think you can see it, but we're actually going to do quite a bit of work to this um, auxiliary exhaust port, too. It's important when you get your tools in here that you just work to the line. I actually don't even work to the line. I'll keep, keep my distance from it um, initially when we're doing the rough cut. Uh, to port this particular line, I'm going to use the um, port of number 8 with the extended bit. All right, like I say, we're using the number eight with an extended bit, um, pretty long, and just coming right up through the uh, exhaust port, the tunnel. And you have to you have to have patience, and you have to do this slow. You can't just dig in. You're going to get all kinds of lumps and bumps. Uh, John says to use a sweeping motion. You just kind of. I'm actually going to do this port half at a time. moderate pressure on it. These bits, these long bits, you can't run them at really high RPM. Um, they'll helicopter, I call it on you. They'll bend and make a big mess of everything. But that's basically the technique. All right, I finished grinding the uh, exhaust port right to the line. And again, I apologize. I know it's probably really hard to see. The next thing we're doing is the auxiliary exhaust ports, what John did is he, he widened it about two millimeters, so it's like two millimeters wider up here we're going to grind, and about one millimeter higher. And to do that I'm going to use the, the right angle grinder. This is actually loaded backwards, uh, but I am going to cut, I just prefer to cut it this way. Um, I'm going to start up in here and get this angle, pull this port in this way, and then I'm going to have to switch to the opposite rotation. Um, I have two of these, one's turned to the left, one's turned to the right, and then I'll pull in this way and blend the two. 